Hey guys! Today I would like to talk about the birth of playable electronic percussion devices. I won't be talking about the drum machines, um, even though they are very closely related, of course, but uh, that's not the point today. I really want to focus on the instruments that are meant to be played by a musician. So basically, um, that's about um, the birth of those instruments and their evolution. But first, how does an electronic drum work? When the electronic drum called pad is struck, an electronic signal is sent to the brain, also called module or unit, via cables, which then creates a sound which amplifies through a speaker system or headphones. These sounds can be other instruments, is mostly percussion sounds, samples and modeled sounds from existing drum kits. What is inside the brain? Without getting into complex details, there are two big principles. 1. The module acts like a synthesizer, meaning like an electronic instrument that generates audio signals that are converted to sounds. 2. The module acts like a sample storage, meaning real drum sounds recorded in a studio are isolated and sampled and stored in the module. Of course, it can be a mix of the two options and much more. Besides, the pad can be replaced by any trigger, and more specifically any acoustic trigger which is attached to the hoop of a real drum in order to transform an acoustic drum into an electronic drum, or of course combine the electronic sound with the acoustic sound. But let's go back to the very beginning of the electronic percussions. In 1967, Felix Visser, a drummer for the Dutch band, the VIPs, modified an A-Storm Rhythm Ace to be played as a live instrument. Without any modifications, the Rhythm Ace was designed by Ikutaro Kakeashi, who will found the Roland Company later in 1972, and limited to playing pre-programmed rhythms. The modification included the addition of printed circuit boards with copper touch surfaces that were triggered by touch or sensed by a Siemens computer relay. It kinda gave the electronic a more human-like quality. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any picture or video from this customized device. A few years later, in 1971, the Moody Blues drummer Graham Edge worked with Brian Graves a professor from Sussex University, to create a playable electronic drum kit that we can hear on that song. Around that time, in the early 70s, the famous Robert Moog released the Moog 1130 percussion controller. This was the first commercial available tactile electronic drum controller. It looked like a 18-inch tom with a multi-pin connector to connect to any MOOC synthesizer of the time, such as the famous Mini MOOC. In despite of that, the title of first commercially available electronic drum goes to the Pollard Syndrome. In 1976, Joe Pollard invented the Syndrome, a sound generator or module going with drum pads. In 1978, the Simmons company was created and would specialize in electronic drums. Dave Simmons developed the SDS3. In 1981, the SDS-5 was released, very famous for its hexagonal pads. The first recordings of the SDS-5 
were made by Richard James Burgess on landscape from the tea rooms of Mars, Chance Number no. 1 by Spandau Ballet, and Angel Face by Shock. At this time, there was a possibility to play a hi-hat sound or a cymbal sound. But they were quite rare, as most drummers used to play with the regular cymbals uh, combined with the electronic pads. So here's the hi-hat pedal for the SDIs 5. In the meantime, uh, the Lean Electronics LM1 was released in 1980. So remember, I told you I wouldn't speak about drum machines. Well, I lied. No, I just want to mention the Lean Electronics LM1 for a simple reason. Well, the LM1 is the first device that uses digital samples. That means that real drum sounds have been previously recorded in the studio and then stored inside the LM1. That's just amazing. And, uh, of course, that's not an electronic percussion uh, in the way you're not supposed to play it with pads. It's a technically a drum machine. But that's a very important step, so I would like to, to mention it. In 1983, the Simons SDS7 featured digital sampling sounds on EPROM for the first time. The same year, the D-Drum Clavia DPP1 used samples stored on a cartridge. In 1984, Tama joined the market as well and released the Techstar electronic drum kit. In 1985, another innovation created five years before, the MIDI, was a new feature on most drum modules, as for most electronic devices. But what is MIDI? MIDI, MDI, short for Musical Instrument Digital Interface is a technical standard that describes a communications protocol, digital interface, and electrical connectors that connect a wide variety of electronic musical instruments, computers, and related audio devices for playing, editing and recording music. 1985. The Siemens SDS9 was the first drum kit that had a built-in MIDI interface, and there was also the Roland Octopad PD8 featuring MIDI, and the Roland DDR30 electronic drum set. 1986. Another innovation came with the Siemens MTM, which was a 8-channel interface unit that basically converted audio signals into MIDI data and MIDI into trigger outputs. It gave users the opportunity to generate control triggers from any audio source and apply those to MIDI synthesizers and sampling units. Yamaha joins the electronic drum market and releases the PMC-1. In 1987, the Siemens launched the SDX that came up with new features such as zone intelligence, pad layering and also included a built-in sampler. The first D-Drum electronic kit, D-Drum Plus, was released. Simmons released a MIDI tuned percussion called the Silicon Mallet. The Silicon Mallet consisted of a three octave set of velocity sensitive pads laid out in the same way as bars on a vibraphone and designed to be used with either sticks or mallets. In 
In 1991, Alizis released the D4 drum module, then in 1992 Roland introduced the TD series with the TD7 and the FD7 hi-hat controller pedal. In the meantime, uh, somewhere in the 90s, I'm not sure about when, but it uh, doesn't matter, there was a new way of using uh, the trigger inputs with the acoustic triggers. An acoustic trigger attached to a drum works exactly like a regular pad. It is used in order to mix the acoustic sound of the drum with an external sound coming from the electronic device, or used as an alternative to the acoustic sound on stage, since the acoustic sound may not be used during a show. The drummers using acoustic triggers are often metal drummers. In particular, the bass drum sound is very often triggered sound in order to make audible every hit when it comes to very fast foot playing. In 1997, Roland introduced his TD10 model with two important musical electronic innovations. The first innovation was a new method providing a sound for the drums part, instead of generating the sound by using samples of an acoustic drum or cymbal. The TD10 used mathematical models to generate sounds using synthesizers. This is the COSM, standing for Composite Object Sound Modeling. The second innovation was a mesh headpad, produced in collaboration with acoustic drum skin manufacturer Remo. The mesh head is made from a double layer of taut woven mesh fibers, fitted with several electronic sensors or triggers. The playing feel is close to that of striking an acoustic drum, but with more bounce than an acoustic skin. In the meantime, uh, very famous models were released by other brands, such as the DTX series from Yamaha or the D-Drum 4 that has been used a lot as an acoustic trigger unit. As you can see on the TD10 picture, there were no specific cymbal pads back then. Uh, instead, they used um, regular rubber pads. In 2001, Roland introduced the V symbols. Alizis declared bankruptcy in 2001 as well, um, which led to the company being restructured, but they will be back a few years later. The 2000s years have known many new releases. Uh, new brands as well, such as Tubox, a Swedish company created by former employees from Didram. Uh, in general, uh, electronic drum kits are getting more and more realistic regarding sound. Many companies have developed uh, educational features, coaching features uh, to help beginners, and many other things, like uh, the possibility to upload your own samples as well, which is uh, something uh, possible on pretty much most modules on the market right now. New generation of acoustic triggers have been released and a new type of trigger showed up. Axis Percussion released its Axis Conversion Kit named E-Kit and was an innovation. Drummers could trigger the bass drum without the use of an external acoustic bass drum trigger. I can't tell when it was released exactly. The small hammer would hit the sensor at the same time the beater hits the drum skin, so it would trigger the signal going to the module and play the sound. 2004 Allowing conventional mounting on a hi-hat stand, the V-hi-hat completed the V-drums experience, allowing the familiar range of motion and weight of acoustic metal cymbals without the noise. So nowadays the market is offering so many options. And if you take the budget, for instance, uh, it goes from a few hundred bucks to, I don't know, the price of a car. <laughs> That's crazy. 
But I would like to end with one of the most innovative uh, rallies I've seen uh, this last years. The aerodrums that you get for, let's say, um, 200 bucks. Aerodrums is a revolutionary air drumming instrument that allows drumming without a drum set. So basically you can play drums besides someone who's sleeping. The drumsticks have reflective balls at the tip and are balanced to feel like traditional drumsticks. Pedals are replaced with a pair of special foot pieces with reflective material. Aerodrums comes with a lamp that shines onto the reflective material on the sticks and foot markers. The lamp is equipped with a special lens and fits neatly onto the camera. The high-speed camera plugs into an available USB port and captures the movement of the reflections made by the lamp from your sticks and foot markers into the Aerodrum software. Okay, people, I think this comes to uh, the end of this brief history of electronic drums. So I hope I didn't uh, omit so, so much stuff. Uh, I couldn't mention everything, of course, but I guess we went through uh, some of the main uh, important steps and innovations regarding electronic drums from the 60s to nowadays. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and if you did, please like my video and subscribe to my channel because there are plenty of new videos coming soon, so stay tuned, bye bye!